What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, all right, before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to the brother LB. All right, because he did a live stream talking about this very subject yesterday. So, uh, you know, shout out to him. If you're not subscribed to LB, please subscribe to the sports and political channel of LB. All right. And shout out to the LDBC, the Lions Den basketball community. So, you know, of course, the NBA Finals are long gone now. And a lot of people are looking forward to the NBA Draft. And, of course, um, August the 2nd, which would be the first day of free agency. A lot of different uh, interesting, notable players are up for, um, you know, free agency. Uh, but I want to talk about something. Now, a lot of people, of course, have been focusing on Giannis Antetokounmpo, myself included. And we've been, like, discussing, you know, his place in history. Um, where he ranks in history, where he ranks right now as far as the NBA is concerned, you know? And, um, but there's a flip side to this. Had that series gone another way, we all would be praising and elevating Chris Paul right now. We'd be talking about where does he rank? And um, <clears throat> still the fact remains, you could still do something of a historical assessment on Chris Paul. This was his first ever NBA Finals. He finally got over the hump and advanced to an NBA Final. And after Phoenix took a 2-0 lead, a lot of people prematurely thought that Phoenix was going to win this series. Okay? Um, but where would you rank Chris Paul? You. I'm talking about you. You who are listening to this video, where would you rank Chris Paul? Um, had he won a championship, he could have possibly cracked my top five as far as point guards are concerned. And before you whine and cry and complain about, oh, well, how could he? You have to remember all of the great point guards in the history of this league. You can't, we can't be prisoners of the moment and forget all of the great point guards that have played, okay? First of all, we have the guy who's considered the GOAT at that position, Magic Johnson, okay? Then you have Oscar Robinson. Most people consider Oscar Robinson a point guard. Some have put him in a shooting guard category because back in the 1960s, a lot of players kind of had both duties. They were called combo guards back then. But most people consider Oscar a point guard. So let's just put Oscar in this category and have him number two. Then what do you have number three? Most people will tell you it's Isaiah Thomas. Not the younger one, but Zeke. All right? Not the Pistons version. Then we have him number three. That tends to be a lot of people's top three as far as point guards. But then afterwards, you have to you have to consider guys. <clears throat> I'd say John Stockton's there. That would be four. Um, I'm not saying in, a, in a, any necessary order, but John Stockton. Then you would have a guy like uh, you know Gary Payton. That's five. Jason Kidd, six. Um, you know. You can also have a guy like Walt Clyde Frazier, Walt Clyde Frazier, excuse me. Um, that's seven. Nate Archibald, eight. Now, some people would, wouldn't have him in the top ten, but some people do. Steve Nash, okay, that's nine. And then you have to consider, look, yes, he played a million years ago, but his resume is unbelievable. And if you're going by resume, he warrants at least – a consideration still for top 10, Bob Cousy. That's 10 right there. Not to mention other all-time great point guards. You know, one guy that slipped my mind just yesterday when I was on uh, when I was on LB's panel, Lenny Wilkins. Lenny Wilkins is a, is a Hall of Fame superstar point guard, okay? Uh, 
you know, and then we look at all of the point guards that have played in the NBA. In the history of this league, you got Guy Rogers, you know, you got Kevin Porter in the 1970s, probably the finest passing point guard of his time. You know, you got uh, Fett Lieber. You got, I'm not saying all these guys are in, in their class, but there's just a lot of different guys who at one point in their careers were playing at a very high level. You got Kenny Anderson who had flashes of himself from college. He never quite materialized in the league, the NBA, the way that you thought he would, but he still had those flashes, those games where he was dominant. Rod Strickler, Steph Curry. How the hell did I forget to mention Steph Curry? I forgot. Steph Curry is basically in my top five as far as point guards is concerned overall, even though you can make a distinction because he wasn't the greatest prototype point guard, uh, prototypical point guard, but he was revolutionary. So you have to put him in that category. So he's like in my top five. Steph Curry, I forgot about him. But, you know, uh, so many different guys. Mark Price had his run. Um, you know, uh, Stephon Marbury, uh, Stevie Franchise. And the list goes on and on as far as great point guards. What holds Chris Paul back? It has to be the playoff failures. And in a lot of instances, it wasn't his fault. Okay, it wasn't. A lot of it was, you know, badly timed injuries by him or teammates, unfortunate collapses, uh, unfortunately, uh, Chris Paul's head coach for much of his career was Doc Rivers, who has been the victim of many collapses. Um, that, 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 that hurts Chris Paul. I would think that Chris Paul, I have to sit back and do another definitive update on my point guards list. But I think at this point, Chris Paul definitely has to be top 10. But I think he's like in the lower portion of that. But I will say this. He's accomplished a lot. If it comes to longevity, when it comes to that, when it comes to just achievements as far as uh, stats are concerned, milestones, yeah, he's up there. This is a guy who... Is just shy. I think he's 22 points shy of 20,000 for his career. So he's about to become the first point guard, the first player, actually, in the history of the NBA to get 20,000 points and 10,000 assists. Now, of course, LeBron's going to join that to actually become the first with 30,000 and 10,000. But still, Chris Paul's about to be the first guy to do that. Um, next year, he's going to pass Chris Paul. He's going to pass Mark Jackson, who has 10,334 assists. And he's going to pass Steve Nash with 10,335 assists to move in to, I believe, third place all time in career assists. Behind only, uh, behind only excuse me, John Stockton and Jason Kidd. Now, I don't know if he's going to catch Kid. Kid has like something like 12,091, I think, career assists. I think he's somewhere around there. I don't know if he's going to pass him. He would probably have to play at a high level for another three years and not get injured to uh, threaten Jason Kidd. But if he does, you know, you really have to look at his numbers, too. Like, I mean... And that's my argument with Will Chamberlain. Like, he's the most dominant player in the history of the NBA by far. Is that enough to offset the playoff disappointments? Because Will still won two championships. And in the two years when Will was healthy and you put a proper team around him, they're some of the greatest teams ever assembled. The 1967 76ers and the 72 Lakers. The 1967-76ers set what was then a wins record 
was 68 and 13. And then the 72 Lakers, of course, set another record going 69 and 13, including that NBA record that still holds today, 33 game win streak. But, you know, Chris Paul's amazing. Chris Paul's led the NBA in assists, I believe, four times in his career. He just coming off a season where he led the NBA in free throw percentage for the first time in his career. And he led the NBA in steals, an NBA record six different seasons, including four consecutive seasons. No other player, if I'm not mistaken, has led the NBA in steals more than three times, I believe. Let me check out our Iverson may have led it four times. Let me make sure about that. And watch as I'm looking at it on a video, right? Watch it takes forever to load. Hey, we're going to fuck your video up. Look, I didn't even click on Trace McGrady. Let's see. Uh... No, three times. So that's twice as many times as anybody else. I believe Iverson led the league in steals three times, Jordan three times, and it might be someone else. It might be like Alvin Robinson or somebody. I can't remember. But um, and, and a lot of people will tell you, I'm not saying that it was stolen from him. And I think Kobe deserved the MVP because it was a makeup. But some people will tell you that Chris Paul probably should have won league MVP in 2008 over Kobe that year. But I think it was a makeup year for Kobe. You know, when he won it in 2008. But, um, yeah, tell me where you rank Chris Paul. You know, the guy was and still is an amazing player. He's had some vintage performances. Um, you know, this particular uh, playoffs, some, some incredible vintage performances by Chris Paul. Um, He's also never really had the benefit that some superstars today have had of playing on a super team. And then there are also some other things you got to look at with Chris Paul. Would we be looking at him differently had the league not, not nixed that trade that would have sent him to the Lakers back in 2000 and uh, what was that, 11? Had the league not rescinded that trade, would things be different? Maybe Chris Paul already has two championships. And if that's the case, you know, and you know, we'll have to look at him differently. Maybe he already has two championships. Maybe he has three NBA final appearances on this belt. You know? Uh, but this is the thing. It is gonna hurt him a little bit not having an MVP and a championship. Nate Archibald never won an MVP, but he won a championship. Oscar Robertson won both an MVP. Matter of fact, I think he's the only player in the 1960s other than Bill Russell or Wilt to win, a, win, a, win an MVP during that decade. And he won a championship, which was eluding him when he went to Milwaukee. Uh, Jason Kidd never won an MVP, but he did win a championship with the Dallas Mavericks. Even Steve Nash you could call them for you could call them um you know uh fraudulent, but he won two league MVPs. You can't take it away from him. Gary Payton won a championship with the Miami Heat. Bob Cousy won numerous championships. I think he won six, if I'm not mistaken. 1957, 1958, 59, 60, 61, 62. 63. Yeah, he won six NBA championships. And he has an MVP, I believe. I think he has two. I know he has at least one. So that's why I say he still warrants a top 10 selection in the, in the uh, all star, all time rankings, even though, you know, he played a million years ago. But still, his, his accomplishments, his resume, you know. Um, yeah, Chris Paul doesn't have it. Dennis Johnson never won a league MVP, but he did win the finals MVP, and he won uh, three championships, one with the uh, Sonics in 1979, and two with the Lakers in 84 and 86. 
So this is something that I think does hurt Chris Paul. The fact that he doesn't have an NBA championship, a finals MVP, uh, or a regular season MVP. I think it does hurt him um, uh, uh, to some degree. Uh, but tell me what you guys think.